Boom. I think we're good. We're good. All right, perfect. So let's dig in here. For those of you that have your handbook with you, I will tell you what page we are on as we progress through this. For those of you with the PowerPoint, I have generally most of that information up on the PowerPoint too. So what is the purpose of a visitor day? Well, the purpose of a visitor day is to really motivate, kind of uh, get some momentum going with inviting because visitors equal members. And when you grow your chapter with more members, with the giver's game philosophy, you have more opportunity to pass referrals to those multiple members, and in return, they will pass referrals to you. So with more members, that equals more referrals. And with more referrals, that equals more business. And ultimately, I'm sure you all know what's next. That means more money in your pocket. BNI is successful because we create an environment that we don't just talk about referrals, we hold people accountable and we actually pass those referrals and track that closed business. So we have the opportunity to know what it does for our business personally and the monetary, but then we also know uh, kind of what it does for our business outside of that monetary side, the relationships, um, the connections that you build, things on those lines. So visitor day is really an opportunity for us as directors to come to your chapter, be provided as a keynote speaker so that you have uh, the, the ability to bring people in to hear more about BNI. Maybe they've been to a chapter, but they're still on the fence. You can invite them to this event because we try to break down BNI and the benefits and give the why within the feature presentation and the education side. So why are you here today? Well, my goal is to give you the tools that you need to succeed. The handbook is a big part of that, but I will send a follow-up email when I am done with this training. And in that training, I'm, or I'm sorry, in that email is a Dropbox folder, or a link if you will. And I'm gonna reference what is in there kind of throughout this training. There might be a couple things that I don't reference uh, that are in there, but when you receive that link, I highly recommend you to go through that. One, make sure you can open it. If you can't, let me know. I do have some professions where it can be a challenge for them uh, to access that. So I've had to do some unique things with certain people. Uh, but two, also to see what's in there. And if you have any questions, you can follow up with me before your events start. Next, I'm here to give you the information on what this process should look like. You're here, uh, try to promote the enthusiasm. So you wanna bring enthusiasm to the chapter. What's great is we've changed the way that we're doing these presentations and we, we've had a lot more chapters enjoy their event. We've had a lot more chapters be excited and see it as an opportunity. And there's even some chapters that put a little twist on it and I think that's great. Uh, one chapter I talked to, they're gonna focus more on maybe the people that have visited the chapter in the last year but they didn't join for whatever reason they're gonna reach back out to those people and use this day as an opportunity uh, to bring them and kind of say, hey, I know you visited once, I want you to come again. It's kind of focused on BNI that day and maybe you'll pick up something you didn't before that might encourage you for membership. Uh, the next one is help you stamp out the negativity. Once again, with the change, we don't really get the negativity that we used to get, but just seeing some names on the people signed in here, uh, I know that we have people that participated Back in the day, the 40 letter campaign. And we've spent the last five, maybe even six years trying to get away from that 40 letter campaign concept. And we've really changed the concept to each one bring one. And that's where if you look at a chapter of 20 people, everybody brings a visitor, that's 20 visitors. Those are better results than, than what we could see with the letter campaign. And if you've gone through it once or twice, you know just as well as I did, I was a part of that group. It's hard to come up with those 40 names consistently every single year. Uh, when you have 20, 30 members in a room, that's a lot of letters. So we really wanna focus more on your relationships you have with the visitors that you wanna bring. That's why stamping out negativity, you don't see that much. And usually when I get any feedback, uh, negative feedback, it, it, they're really worried that it's based upon the old way, which we'll talk more about that. And then of course, giving you the ability and the strength to be a mentor for the members. Uh, hopefully they will come to you as an expert 
because you're trained. You've gone through this, maybe you've been through one in the past also. So what do great teams look like? And what's always funny is norm, when we did this training live, we would do it within a week and usually it was the recognition events and we'd also do these trainings. This year we wanted to try this different to see if, we, um, if it was a little more convenient for people to sign on to a webinar to get the training. I've seen a few chapters that have had their events. I've seen a few chapters that I've visited while they're in the process. And so far it looks like uh, these webinars are working out. So that's, that's a good thing. But when we would do them live, it was usually around Super Bowl time. And so when we would ask this question, what do great teams look like? We usually get the winner of the Super Bowl. So I'm not gonna play that game. Uh, what I'm gonna play is you know, great teams, they support each other. And in BNI, that's either for growth, for referrals, uh, doing those one-to-ones. But a great team comes together as a group to reach an ultimate goal. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about your current goals that you have for your chapter and how the visitor day can help you go towards those goals. I'm not gonna say if you wanna grow your chapter by 10, your visitor day is probably not going to be the one thing you're gonna do this year that's gonna get you 10 new members, right? But what if it gets you five new members You've already added two because we're somewhat into the year. And then that leaves you with only three more that you have to worry about uh, to reach that goal. And you've now sparked kind of a culture of inviting. People sent invites out, be it how well they followed up on it. They still have the opportunity after the event to follow up on those. Now, of course, a great team would hold each other accountable. They would see those great results on the specific day. But I'm realistic. I know things happen. I know you could have the best candidate in the world, great friend of yours, looking to join BNI, and maybe that date doesn't work. But as we walk through this, I'll show you that they can come anytime during the process of planning, but really ultimately want to get them there when a director can answer those questions and be that resource for them. But then we'll talk about the fifth week, which is focused on follow-up. So a lot of your chapters are already great teams. This is the time to show that team effort to come together for an ultimate goal. If you have the handbook, I'd like you to go to page five for me, be it if you have it digital or right in front of you, uh, printed. I printed mine because that just works a little bit better for me. There was a concept that's called three plus one. And in three plus one, uh, it really talks about the three things you can do plus telling stories within that process to help grow a chapter. And this picture that you see in your book or on the, the PowerPoint is in there. And what it shows is a chapter of 16 members have 256 connections. If one person connects to uh, the rest of the 15 and so on and so on, and that's the diagram it shows. So let's say that within a couple of years span, you end up doubling your chapter. So you go from 16 to 32. Now, if you can see the picture, that's a lot more connections. Specifically, it's 1,024 connections total. So when we talk about growing our chapter, I like the verbiage of you're actually growing your business. Because if you really do look at the other members in your chapter as your sales force, well, wouldn't you want to have the 120, or I'm sorry, the 1,024 connections in your sales force versus uh, just the 256, right? So one thing kind of on the wording, if, if you're a firm believer like I am, when you present something, words, the way you say it, not just necessarily how you um, emphasize it, but what you say plays big into it, really point out that by growing the chapter is really growing your business individually. By you providing a visitor that's in another context sphere, you have no idea how much that's going to impact, not just the members in that context sphere, but then those referrals they bring in, those visitors that they bring to the chapter. So growth for a chapter is a lot more than just a number. It really is a great impact that can happen for each individual business in your chapter. Now, if you'd ever wanna kind of dig more into the education on the three plus one concept, uh, you'll see that there is a link there at the bottom of page five. Obviously, if you printed it, you can't click on it. But if you go back into the email and click on that, it'll take you into that education piece. And you could even use this for your chapter um, if you wanted to show them the benefit of the growth. 
So if you can turn to the next page, page six for me, please. And for a minute, we're gonna talk about the goals of your chapter. And I touched on that a little bit here, but you guys, uh, for a leadership team, you've been in place since October. And after the training, we asked you to come up with goals. Some of you sent those goals to me. Some I hear about when I'm in the chapters. A lot of you have them on your goal boards. You keep them in front of you. This morning at our advanced leadership training, I heard a lot of those goals playing into uh, what your networking goal was and things on those lines. And if you can see the picture on the PowerPoint, it has what most people think goals are. And there's a street that splits two ways and one goes to a trophy that says win and the other one goes to a, a sign that says fail. And if you've ever been through my member success program training, this is how I looked at goals for a very, very, very long time. And then my theory was, wow, if I didn't hit my goal, I'm gonna cut it down a little so I can. Or if I did hit my goal, I'm just gonna do a little bit more so I don't have to work too hard, right? Well, the more that I started developing myself personally, uh, leadership, sales, reading books, listening to books, things on those lines, I realized that the next picture is very true. And what that picture is, it's, it's a road that hits a fail, another road hits a fail, next fail, fail, and then it finally hits that win. And I make the joke, I've never read a sales book or a motivational book that sounded like this. Well, I had this idea, I threw it out there, it became a great success, and overnight I had no issues, no problems, and boom, now I'm successful. Because that's just not true. And if you've ever worked with a core group, you'll know that's not true even starting a chapter in BNI. It's not even true maintaining. Every time that you fail at a goal, it's an opportunity to succeed. And the ultimate goal is to learn from that failure and use that to your advantage to grow. So if you've had visitor days in the past that haven't gone well, use that failure as an opportunity to have a success, right? So I want you to think of your goals and I want you to use the visitor day concept to kind of get that momentum maybe towards your growth. Um, if you have accountability partners and you set that up, guess what? Those are one-to-ones that people are doing. So that goes to your one-to-ones. If you're doing education throughout the chapter, those are CEUs. There's a lot of advantages of using this time because the members are in the mindset of, I know you're gonna be bringing information to us, I know we need to be listening because it's gonna to be towards an ultimate goal, but you can slide in a couple other things in there through the process. So what's different? So in the past, when you had a visitor day, it was usually at a different location. It could have been with another chapter depending on time and day of your meeting. Uh, normally it was about an hour and a half of a PowerPoint. Vince would go through the whole PowerPoint. Uh, director would be there to do the feature presentation spot to break it up a little bit. And what I did is I reached out, I've now been kind of uh, streamlining this for the last three years. And what I started doing was reaching out to chapters that did have good events. And I asked them what went well and what would you want to see different? And I remember a specific chapter in Lincoln, the president said, and they added two, three new members. Um, they had great success. And she said, well, Brandon, do you really want me to be dead honest with you? And I'm like, yes, I certainly do. And she goes, well, here's the feedback I got. My members don't appreciate that they don't get to talk because uh, they think you got a five, 10 second introduction. Uh, they feel that it's not really a good example of what a BNI meeting is. And I've actually had members tell me, I invited my member to the next week or my visitor to the next week because I wanted them to see what a meeting was. And my goal as your director is to actually take what you say and I can't change the world. There's some things I may not have control over, but I want to be conscious of those things. And if there are changes we can make, I want to see those changes happen. So as of last year, we made these changes. Number one, the chap it's a chapter event instead of a regional event or a joint event. So these are at your chapter level. They will be held at your location. We give you the specific day uh, that the director is going to be there. But other than that, you can choose to charge for food. You can choose to not, or you could choose to have food there. Those are all your choices with the chapter. You deal with all that. You no longer have to scrounge up a check for us at the end for every headcount, things on those lines. Um, we want this to look like your chapter. We want it to be the culture of your chapter. And if you don't have food there on the normal basis, 
well, let's not let the visitors think that there always is food there, right? So those are your choices. Uh, next, the president will run the meeting, the traditional meeting. And we'll kind of cut down some of the differences once we get to that week four. Uh, but the big one is the director will be there to provide the education and the feature presentation. So yes, we do quite a bit of presenting in there, but it's only during the open times uh, that you would expect somebody to pr be presenting at the chapter anyways. So we did run all the visitor days last year like this. Most of you, if not all of you, experienced that, and we got a lot better feedback on this. Tell you the truth, I don't think I got any negative feedback last year uh, because of the empowerment the chapter had, uh, the ability to invite kind of your choice as a member, and then the ultimate results. Uh, we did see quite a bit of growth last year, even after the fact, because of that momentum. So your incentives. <laughs> So you all know about our 2017 BNI Heartland incentives, okay? Uh, if you look right under that, uh, don't look at the trip for two yet. But quarterly, uh, there's an individual drawing, or there's a drawing for one person at the end of a quarter, and that drawing you uh, get a $50 gift card. Now, when we talked about these incentives, Vince, Chris, and I worked very hard together to touch on every motivation or every type of uh, learning style, if you will. For me, I said, listen, I like things. I'm motivated by uh, a way I can win and there's no strings attached. So that's what this one is. If you sponsor a new member, you go into a drawing for a $50 gift card, no questions asked, boom. Just make sure your name is the sponsor on the application. The next one is a quarterly for a chapter. If a chapter has three plus, uh, then that chapter is entered into a drawing for $100 to their chapter fund. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's any chapter that adds a new member. I apologize. So once again, no strings attached. You can use that $100 for social, celebration, uh, branding, anything like that. Annual, so kind of the bigger one. Uh, somebody who has sponsored a new member, that individual then, not only for the $50 gift card, they're also entered into a drawing for one year of their dues to be paid. If that doesn't motivate most of the members in your chapter, I'm not sure what will. I thought that one was pretty cool. And then for the chapter, uh, there's an opportunity to win a chapter branding kit, and that is the one where you must be plus three uh, to be eligible for that. And we already have some chapters that are eligible into that drawing. And then we have the membership extravaganza one, which is the trip for two to international conference. And those rules, uh, let's see, do I have the dates? I have the dates. Those dates are ran, sorry. Uh, between March 6th, so we've already started, to May 26th. And within March 6th to May 26th, if you add eight members to your chapter, you are entered into a drawing for any of the members that sponsored a new member for a trip to two to international conference. Now, eight is more than it used to be. The timeline is longer than it used to be, but it used to be out of four out of every four chapters that qualified, one person got drawn out of that. Now, if your chapter sponsors eight, you're in. No strings attached, no questions. Uh, it's just that you have to hit eight, and then if you've sponsored a member, you're entered for the drawing. We wanted to help and motivate the chapters. That's what these incentives are for, obviously, for growth. There's many more benefits to growth, by all means. Uh, but hopefully as you're reading through those or as I talk through those, something triggered you personally to say, you know what, that's the one I like. Or, you know what, that's the one my chapter would be motivated by. And we really tried to make it as diverse as we could. Uh, okay, so page six in uh, uh, your book there, it kind of breaks down the different weeks. This is kind of a, a look at it. I recommend, and this is why you're a week before your week one, that you get together as a leadership team and look through that planning week. Uh, use leadership team meeting to coordinate the visitor day campaign. Uh, leadership team that should be in attendance, you're gonna president, vice president, secretary treasurer, visitor host coordinator, growth coordinator, and event coordinator. Good to have them all there because then they kind of know what's going on too. Uh, you have the advantage of being on today to get a lot of information as a webinar training. But when you bring everybody together, somebody might point out something that maybe was missed, or they'll ask a question of something in the book uh, as they're going through it. 
So lots of advantages there. And then I'm going to go through individually all the different weeks uh, as we break that down. So then if you can go to page seven in your handbook, uh, gives you a little bit more on the leadership team meeting and you want to go through your supplies and make sure that you're up to date on everything. Applications, uh, inviting options, which will be in your follow-up email, but if you want to print those, thank you cards. Just make sure that you're prepared for having five, six, eight visitors in the room. And by the way, if you have double digits, that's even more awesome, right? But you would want to be prepared for that anyway. Because once again, uh, with all this inviting going on, if you have a member that reaches out to 10 people, two people show up on the day of, but they still have eight people that might be interested, you never know when they're gonna be showing up. Hopefully that next week, but you never know, okay? Uh, and then make sure that your top 10 list is relevant. And uh, we'll dig into that on that next one. So one thing that I'm gonna talk about a lot are mechanisms. And mechanisms are for your visual and kinesthetic learners in your chapter. So in that follow-up folder, there is not a folder in there that says mechanisms. I did have somebody ask me that, and I'm, I'm sure the way I presented it possibly could have came off that way. But these mechanisms are in the Dropbox folder. So I wanted to just touch on what you're going to see. Uh, so the first one is your chapter's top 10 list. What I mean by relevant on this if you've had a dentist on your top 10 list for three years now, and maybe you've never even had a dentist visit, I think it's safe to say that the members understand you want that everybody would like that profession in there, but it's time to take it off that top 10 list. It just didn't happen. And it's not going to happen tomorrow, right? And if it does, cool. But what you want to do is go through there and say, look it, we've added six new members in the last year. This is the context here that they fit in. Let's reach out to them and see if there's any more people that they would like to see in the chapter and maybe revive that top 10 list. Then when you bring that to the chapter and say, look, everybody, we've, we've got a couple of different professions on here. Maybe I then see a profession and my buddy does that. I never thought to invite him. So now I have a couple more ideas of who I can invite. The next mechanism, and this one you'll find, is follow your money. I like this one because for your kinesthetic learners, it gets them thinking, right? And what it basically says is, who do you write checks to that does your hair, adjusts your back, things on those lines. And a lot of the times, some of those professions, you already have them represented in your chapter. No big deal. But the other ones, and this used to be the concept of who do you write checks to? And nobody really writes checks that much anymore. I know I still write a few. But this just gives them an idea of people they already know but now let's think about inviting them because obviously they can fit into BNI. Uh, the next mechanism is my least favorite, and that is the prospect list. Okay? Uh, the reason I don't like this is it's basically just taking all of the professions that are available on BNI, pulling them off, and dropping them into an Excel file. The print is very small, it's very, very long, and there are some duplicates on there even. So this one is kind of the last result or the last ditch effort. If somebody straight up says, listen, I don't know who to invite, or I'm stuck at my desk all the time. I can't get out there and be inviting like everybody else can. All right, well, take 10 minutes looking through this prospect list, and maybe it might spark somebody you know that's obviously a profession that could be in B&I, and you can invite them. Next one is the top 50 professions. I'm a big fan of this one as a education uh, coordinator moment, a uh, little exercise they can do. If you have 30 members in your chapter, I'm pretty safe to say that you can cross out at least 25 of the professions on the top 50 professions, right? So, and I say 25 because you might have five kind of unique that aren't necessarily in the top 50. So now you've crossed out 25 of them and that leaves 25 open professions. Compare that to your top 10 list. Maybe pull a couple off the uh, professions list, put them on the top 10 list, things on those lines. But it gives you an opportunity to see, once again, popular professions in BNI, maybe not in your chapter currently, uh, but visually, your members will see that they have the opportunity to invite some other people. And then the invite letter. When we got rid of the 40-letter campaign, I took the invite letter out completely, got rid of it. 
because for some of us, we have bad memories of it, right? But then I had a chapter that reached out and they said, you know, we still want to do the 40 letters that work for us. It's not daunting for us. And we've gotten great results from it. And I was thrown back a little when I heard this. Because once again, I had a negative idea of it. So I was shocked to see that people still wanted to use it. So I put it back in there. And the invite letter can be used for multiple things. It could be an outline for an email to send out to somebody you're inviting. It could be the member that wants to send 10, 15 written mailed letters to those people. I put it back in there so that you guys have a template you can use of what the invite letter used to be. Now I will warn you, it has information of it of a previous core group. So you'll need to go in there and change things so that it is relevant to your chapter specifically, but don't throw that out there. I mean, don't throw it out completely and think that your members may not want to do it. Offer it as an option of inviting, just in case you do have those people that still believe a written letter or a sent letter is a great way to invite. Uh, so we touched on context spheres and power teams, and I touched on this a little bit at the advanced leadership training this morning. And the reason that we want to talk about this when you think about inviting, and I've got a slide next that'll break it down a little more, is growing a context sphere is the ability to bring in visitors that already have three, four, five other members that they can instantly start doing business with. Real estate agent, mortgage broker, home inspector, uh, contractor, plumber, those all fall under what I call a residential context sphere, right? Somebody's buying a new house, in theory, every one of those members could help them with something, okay? Then we have power teams. Power teams are more of a uh, strategy. They're not gonna naturally form. Sometimes it's because two people discovered they're looking for the same client, or two people discovered that one referral uh, works with that other referral. And they might do marketing together. They might go on an appointment together, which I thought was pretty crazy when I first heard it. But then I took a plumber with me to an appointment uh, when I was selling countertops, and it actually made a big difference, right? But power teams are a strategy that two, three, probably not very often, more than four members come together, and they hold each other accountable weekly for referrals. Now, great results of that, right? You can be in someone's contact sphere and not be on their power team. So when we talk about growing contact spheres, don't worry about the power teams. The more people you bring in, the more likely those are to happen. But the next slide I'm gonna show you kind of breaks that down a little bit more. So for those of you that maybe don't, can't see the slide, it's not in your uh, handbook, but it's four quadrants. And in the first quadrant, uh, the right-hand quadrant, you see grow your contact sphere. When you join BNI, or if you haven't done this yet, and you've been in BNI for a while, you want to reach out to the people that you're already passing referrals to. One, you have credibility with them. Two, they obviously like you. And three, they respect what you do. What happens to your credibility when you take somebody that's already receiving referrals from you and then you expose them to 15, 20, 35 other members that could possibly pass referrals to them too? You're opening up their opportunity to grow their business. So these are the people that you know, and they're in your context here. The next quadrant is helping your members, right? Givers gain, help your members. These are people that you know, and they're in other people's context spheres. Now, this is an advantage because if you have somebody uh, in your chapter that's looking to grow their context sphere, and you know the person that they're looking for, take that member with you to invite that person in. I can't show value to a business banker on what BNI can do for them uh, selling countertops, right? But I could bring the financial planner with me that will understand their lingo better. We'll talk about the business owners that they know and work with and give that extra value to even get them to the meeting to see what BNI is all about. And then the next quadrant on the uh, upper left is uh, grow your concept sphere again. These are people that you may know, but they're not, uh, and they're in your contact sphere. Now, for a while, it took me a while to come up with people that you may know. But then I realized I worked with a lot of contractors via email through a client of mine, and I never actually met them. 
But one thing I did is if I was working with a contractor and they were great to work with, I would do a before and after picture. So the kitchen before and then after when the whole project was done, including the contracting work. And I would send that to them in a send out card and I'd have the before and after picture. I'd say, you do amazing work. I want to introduce you to the other people that I work with. Uh, can you come to this meeting at this time to personally meet them? And I used it as an inviting tool. So uh, this is a great way to tell the members, hey, think of people that you've only contacted maybe via email or you've only talked to them on the phone and invite them to meet face-to-face. -face. Of course, it's at your B&I meeting, but invite them to meet face-to-face -to, -face to grow that relationship. And then the last one is new markets. And these are people that you don't know and they're in nobody's context here. If you can bring in a new market into your chapter, it is gold. Because then if they go through this quadrant and they grow their contact sphere, they help other members with the people they know, they start reaching out to people that they kind of work with and then they end up with a new market, it's a continuum. And that's really a concept that chapters have used to uh, grow to those larger numbers because you have a strategy, you have a plan that you're doing on that. All right, page eight in your handbook, we're going to dig into what uh, the next five, six weeks is going to look like for you. So for each week, you can actually break these all apart and you have all the information you need and kind of a quick overview of what it should look like at the meeting. So just kind of looking at that page eight, uh, you're going to combine the networking education and the announcement time together. And you could probably still sneak a couple announcements in. Uh, what I, if, if, it, if it's really a big deal, to lose that, you can throw that out and say, if members have any announcements for the next few weeks, send those to the president, let me know, and I'll announce them at the end of the meeting, depending on how much time that we have. Uh, if you are a larger chapter, and time can be a challenge with your education moment, that's when you can do shorter weekly presentations if needed. Uh, but I really haven't seen that too common, even in the larger chapter. What you want to look is uh, have the growth coordinator talk about chapter attitude, why growth is important. Education coordinator can touch on half, half, and half. Growth coordinator announces the visitor day date if you haven't already. Education coordinator then discusses marketing opportunities or the different mechanisms that they could use. For your handout, uh, I recommend that you bring an invitation, you bring a mechanism, you bring something that you can give to the chapter or you send it via email afterwards. The reminders and homework, you want to email the reminders to bring however many names that you guys choose as a chapter. You want to add focused inviting days to any newsletters, uh, your Facebook page, things on those lines that you're having a visitor day just to start promoting that date. And then the secretary treasurer, this is a big one. You want to mark down a director is going to be there to speak for that day. The reason I say that that is a big one, I went to a visitor day yesterday in Sioux Falls and a guy was setting up a PowerPoint to give a presentation. Unfortunately, they had, not unfortunately, fortunately, they had six visitors in the room, so I wanted to take the opportunity to give the presentation for BNI, and he got bumped to the next week. I know him, him and I have history, and it's, it's positive credibility history, so he was cool with it, but if that's a newer member, that may not be the case, right? They're nervous, they've been preparing, and, and now they're getting taken out of that slot. So really try to get that information over to Secretary Treasurer uh, that you're gonna have a director there. And if you reach out to me, I can let you know who's gonna be there. Uh, I'm probably gonna put that list in the follow-up folder just because I've had a handful of people ask. So I'll work on that, I'll work on that. Uh, so if you can go to page nine, we're gonna break down then what that overlook was. So you're gonna see the chapter attitude, middle of page nine, uh, why is growth important to chapter success? Well, number one, any organization will consistently lose members for various reasons. This is known as attrition. Strong B&I chapters recognize this and they have a focus on growth at all times. Every now and then I get a member that'll say, you know, why do we do visitor days? We always focus on growth. Well, I hope I've given you a few whys already. Momentum getting some people re-engaged possibly. Uh, if you haven't had visitors for a while and you end up with five or six in the room, it's really a great way to show uh, those members what it's like to have a lot of visitors. There's a lot of energy in the room. There's a lot of great things that can come of that. 
change is constant. Chapters are constantly changing, either up or downward direction, and I see that as a director. Number three, growth is essential in building and maintaining large, strong context spheres. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about that in the upcoming months here. Number four, large chapters are more self-sustaining because they have lots of members doing a lot of inviting. When chapters reach that 4550 mark, it's very, very rare to have a meeting without a visitor. And for some of you that may not be in that situation in your current chapter, um, it, it really is cool to see, but it's a numbers game. When you have 50 people that are getting referrals and getting close business out of BNI, you better believe that they're going to have the ability to invite uh, more often. And sometimes it's a referral that's passed to a member and that member that does business with them ends up inviting them, right? Because they understand more of what they do. Uh, number five, large chapters have a larger pool of leaders to choose from. I know we are only into March, but we start talking about that process in June. It's just around the corner. Uh, number six, large chapters pass more referrals because there are more members to pass referrals to, givers gain philosophy. And number seven, large chapters have energy as well as high renewal and retention rates. Now, there's seven points there. You know your chapter better than I do. And, and I'm trying to understand everybody's culture in your chapter. But at the end of the day, you know the members better than I do. You don't have to use all seven of these if you don't want to. You can just touch on a couple of them that are relevant for your chapter. And then the next part there, the rule of half, half, and a half. And what I love about this rule is it's freaky how accurate it is with the old letter campaign. What I love even more is we are starting to see more than half of the invites showing up. And I think that has to go back to the way people are inviting. So that's pretty cool. But here's the concept. And once again, if you have a PowerPoint, you can see it on my screen. Uh, if you don't, go to the next page on page 10. And uh, I'm going to fill in the blanks there on page 10. So let's say your chapter goal of new members is 10. I'm specifically using 10 because it's way easy math. Okay. So where it says chapter goals of numbers of members, put 10. Now, if you need 10 new members, that means you're going to need 20 applications because half of those applications are going to be crossover. Some of them you may reject. Um, some of them may not be good fits, but more than likely, if you get 20 applications, 10 of them are going to fit well into your chapter. So that means you need 40 people who are interested in submitting an application. I'm going to do this very quickly. Guest versus visitor. A visitor can join your chapter. A guest cannot. There are some chapters that don't even count guests as visitors because of their closing percentage. And that's fine. I'm not expecting you to dig into that. If you do, let me know. Uh, or if you want to, let me know. But when it comes to the visitor day, you're there to really show what BNI is, how it works, and how people can join. It is in the member's best interest to invite visitors. But regardless, you're probably going to get some guests. So the visitors are the people that would be interested in submitting an application. So that means you need 80 actual visitors, which leads to 160 RSVPs, which means 320 people were contacted verbally, which means 640 invitations were sent out. Now I'm going to pull up a calculator here because I'm really bad at math. There we go. So if we take that number and your 640 invitations sent out with a 20 member chapter, a 32 invitations, basically 40 letters, right? That's what this mainly is based off of is mathematically, if you all send 40 letters, here's what our results will be. So the half, half and a half rule is generally true, but what I want you to use it for is to show members what it would take to get there. And then you can say, or if you all commit to bringing three visitors, so we have a 20 member chapter, everybody commits to three, that puts 60 visitors in the room. Divide that by two. That means 30 people will be interested. Divide that by two, you're gonna get 15 applications, and then you'll get uh, seven and a half, eight new members. Now, we did not reach the 10 new members, but once again, you can use this as a process to get towards your goal. But I will tell you right now, if you tell members that they're responsible for three visitors, 
Doesn't that sound better than for 32 invitations? I can take the number three and comprehend that and, and reach that goal a lot easier than you telling me I need to send 32 invitations. So now what the members have the opportunity to do is I can reach out to three people and I'll have three people here. I'm going to reach out to 10 people and I'll have three people here. It's whatever they want to do. But you have to have accountability with your members. Out of the four-week process, uh, the visitor day being the fourth, two of those weeks are accountability. So what I want you to do as a leadership team is find that number, okay? Find that number of how many names are needed. So once again, raise the bar. It's my next slide here, by the way. Raise the bar. You're going to tell the members that they're all responsible for four visitors. So if you multiply that by two, that means you're going to have to actually have eight invites or however many invites that's gonna take. But if you invite eight people and they get, I'm sorry, if you get eight commitments, that means half of them are gonna show up. So we're gonna take that one more time. So you're looking at about 16 names that you're gonna to need to get the RSVPs to get uh, the visitors that you're looking for. So you have a number of 16 names that you're responsible to come up with, and we're gonna break that in two. So we want you to bring eight names next week, eight names the following week. But at the end of the day, we want you to have three visitors here. Having the names gives the opportunity uh, to see who's coming, classifications that people are contemplating and talking about and the people that they know. So you have an idea of who's being invited, but then it's also that hard commitment of if you can come up with the 16 names, you do the process, Ultimate goal is you're gonna have four here at the end of the day. Uh, and then marketing your visitor day. This is where they have the opportunity to do so. Word of mouth, you can buy them personally, great. Uh, invitation, you can use a BNI invitation, you can use a Facebook invitation, uh, you can use BNI Connect, which I'll show you. Uh, and that's the next one there, using the BNI Connect invitation. Regardless, what you're looking for is uh, reaching out to them in one way to invite them, following up with them verbally, having them there the day of. And the reason that we've made this big change is because we're starting to focus on the results versus the activity. When we did the 40 letters and somebody didn't have any visitors, they could easily say, I sent my 40 letters, you saw it, you signed them, you stamped them, you know that I sent 40 letters, I got nothing. Where if we make that commitment of, okay, four visitors, and I show up with two, that's a pretty darn good result still half, right? The half, half, and a half rule. So that's where we want to focus on results, giving them the ultimate number of what we want to see with visitors and right raising that bar. So even if they get halfway there, it's still a pretty good day for a visitor. Day. All right. So that's all week one. That's no big deal, right? That's easy to knock out in a few education minutes and stuff. Explaining it takes a little bit longer than actually walking through it. But that's why I've included education coordinators, growth coordinators, vice president and president on all my emails, because by working together, you can tackle this no problem. All right, next page. Oh, and then of course the follow-up at the bottom there. Uh, you wanna send an email out to remind everybody how many names that they are accountable for. I send out weekly emails to kind of walk you through the process and keep you reminded on what, uh, what kind of the week should look like. I walk you through on how to send an email to the whole chapter if you don't know how to do that. So I'll give you that resource by all means. Page 11, we are on week two now. Uh, page 11, just the overview. Uh, during open networking, you wanna have the accountability chart up that used to be done during the meeting. It took about 30 minutes of the meeting and it was very awkward if you did actually have visitors there because all you're talking about is other visitors. So here, it's a little more silent. Uh, you just have an accountability flip chart on a grease board, something on those lines, and you have people mark that down, uh, how many names they have or what names they have at the open networking side. Education network, uh, you want, or networking education, you want to have the education coordinator talk about inviting off of BNI Connect, and I'm going to show you that with PowerPoints. And by the way, this PowerPoint is included in your follow-up folder. So if there's anything that you want to take off of this and use as a visual in your chapter, you're more than welcome to. Uh, of course, accountability, excuse me, is a big part of it. And then after the meeting, communication, 
Uh, if somebody's doing great, recognize them for it. If somebody's struggling, see if there's any way you can help them. If you go to the next page on page 12, during open networking, ensure your accountability flip chart is up and ready for the members to add the names to the list. During open networking, encourage members to get over there and write those on there. Uh, you'll see an example in the middle there of what an accountability can look like or a chart can look like. In this one, it has the members' names, and then it has maybe two visitors, and you put their names in there. I'm a number, I'm not a numbers guy, but I would rather hear how many names people have brought as a number, maybe not necessarily the name specifically, although there's value to that. So you could even have members' name, uh, go write the number of how many names you brought today and, uh, and turn them into the leadership team, something like that. But you just have to have some type of accountability since you're giving them a free form of inviting. During the BNI meeting, the education moment should be focused on uh, how to send an invite to the visitors. So if you look, there is a link in the handout there. Uh, so you can use that. But also in this PowerPoint, I'm going to show you uh, what we have provided. So when you're looking to invite, the first page here is kind of navigating through the operation menu, breaking it down even more simple. Once again, you can use this PowerPoint if you'd like. Uh, it's gonna show you that you select your region. Most of you don't have to worry about. You go to create email, and then you go to email visitor invitation. And this is under um, operations. When that email comes up, you fill in the following blanks. Sorry, my screen's over here, uh, which is first name, last name, their company name, their, uh, the visitor's email address, and then a personal message. For most people, to send out eight invites doing it this way should be a snap. Should take probably 10 minutes total if you have all of this information ready to go, right? So then once they put all that in there and they hit the send button, this then generates an email that goes to the person they invited. Here's what it looks like from the person that receives it, which by the way, you can send one to yourself so you can test it. It is addressed from you, even though it comes through BNI. It goes to the person that you're inviting, and then the subject is invitation, my BNI chapter wants to meet you. It's well branded, so it has the fact on there about BNI, uh, it has the fact about strategy with referrals. So then the next thing you're going to see on there is it, it is personally then addressed to who you're inviting. Uh, this is the big one. This is the one you want to stress to your members. Your personal message should not have any information about the meeting location and time, but it does need to have the specific date of your visitor day. So what I've been encouraging people to put is, uh, so in your message say, we have a keynote speaker from BNI, our, our director, coming and talking more about BNI. This is a great opportunity to understand the meeting better and possibly submitting an application to lock out your competition. Something on those lines. Doesn't have to be that wordy. I, I know the less you say, the better most of the time in email. But then what happens is the following piece, so that's your personal message, then it will tell them uh, what time and what day that it is on. Uh, and once again, since these are now hosted at your chapter meeting, we don't have to change any of that. We used to have to do special invites because it was a different location, different time, different day, anything on those lines. That's not the case anymore. That's why we can use this as a tool. And then it just talks about BNI as a professional networking organization and primarily uh, purpose is to exchange qualified referrals. Then it says that this chapter is specifically looking for somebody in your profession. Please let us know if you're able to attend, uh, and then sincerely, and it is addressed to you. Now, if any visitors respond to this, it will come to your email. Once again, even though everything is through BNI Connect, it will come back to your inbox if anybody responds to this. So this is a great tool. Um, there's a link that walks you through this. You can use this PowerPoint but I really think your members need to know how to use this because like I said, it is quick, it is easy, there's accountability there, and of course then they can register their members once that part's done. Week three looks very similar to week two. You've got your accountability chart up there. Uh, you wanna recognize members that have done well and your education piece can focus on follow-up, a different way of inviting, a different mechanism, anything on those lines 
uh, it's kind of a free form there of what you'd like to do. So uh, page 14, then you go to page 15. Once again, it just breaks it down a little bit with the accountability, very simple on that. Uh, and now we're to page 16, okay? This is week four of the process. This is your actual visitor day, okay? So what that looks like is you wanna get there early, you wanna be able to have the room set up, let the venue know how many people you have, if you have extra people, be it if there's food, if you need more tables, things on those lines. You really wanna be thinking about that ahead of time so that you can prepare a week before that. Uh, education is gonna be filled by a director. We're gonna talk a little bit of the history of BNI, uh, and then we're also going to touch on uh, some current numbers of BNI. The feature presentation is also going to be filled by the director. We're gonna talk about mainly the four points of BNI that make it successful in the meeting. During the announcements portion of that meeting, the director will get up and go through the application. So we'll give applications to all the visitors, make sure that they get them. Uh, and then after the meeting, the visitor host, growth coordinator, membership committee, they all wanna come together uh, just in case you get a plethora of applications that day. The best thing you can do is follow up on those, be on top of that process. Uh, so if you go to page 17, this is, just gives you a little more of that information I talked about, and it gives you the ability to relay this back to your members on how they should be prepared. Be there early, wear your name badge. Basically, be prepared to impress your visitor and make that first impression, make their visitor experience the best it can be. And then we go to page 18, week five, right? So we've done all this prep three weeks prior. We had our event on week four. You got some applications. You take a breath. You're like, wow, whirlwind of a month, but I'm glad we did it. We had great success. We've got momentum. We've got more visitors coming that couldn't make it, things on those lines, okay? But if you look at that next page with the follow-up, you're going to have a few different reasons people uh, couldn't make it. Uh, they wanted to come, but they couldn't. Uh, said they would come, but they didn't. Came to the event, but did not submit an application. Wanted to visit the chapter before submitting an application. Once again, they, they really got to see the meeting for the most part. Uh, need to speak with their employer before submitting the application. Need to speak with their employer about reimbursement for dues. So when you follow up with them, right, the goal was to show them what BNI is, how it works, and how to lock out their competition. If they received an application, it's your opportunity to follow up with them and say, you know, I know you didn't submit it last week. Would love you to come and join us. You can bring your application with you and uh, would love you to see me and I one more time so you can see the value of how it can work for you. But it's great to call them. But if you know this person well enough and a text message is going to be more effective and email things on those lines, go that route. Communicate the way they like to be communicated with. Um, and then for the first meeting, you want to remind the members that they want to be there early. You're going to have new faces. Uh, you got member success program you want to have those dates for so you can get them to the new members. Mentor coordinator needs to be rare enough. There's a lot of things that are going to happen in week five based upon what happened in the last four weeks. You're either going to have a lot of visitors that maybe couldn't be in there or they're coming for their second time. You're going to have a lot of new members. I like the new members. I think most of us do, right? But just be prepared to take that little breath, but don't just let it all fly out the window. Follow-up is key when you have that many invitations out there and that many possibilities of people coming and visiting your chapter. So that finishes uh, the handbook. I hope I walked you through that clear enough so that you kind of get the idea. Uh, I always like to close with a quote, but like I said, don't, don't just sign off. I might ask a couple of you who is who here, uh, but the quote is, people make events into stories and stories give events meaning. I'm a storyteller, I love telling stories. Have a great event that leads to a fantastic story that you get to share with somebody down the road on when your chapter hit your goal or what got that momentum to reach your goal this year or when we were down in numbers and we were able to revive. We brought three new members in and as they helped us for our chapter, we had the ability to come back 20 strong now. Or something on those lines. Let this be a part of making a great story for your chapter. So, enough information for everybody?
Right? Right? Uh, okay. So Terry, I got you down. Uh, Chris, how are you today? This is how you jump on there, Mr. Quail. All right. So I've got Chris Quail there. Lauren, I've got you. Um, Brooks. Brooks, I'm going to unmute you really quick. Is this John by chance? Nothing. Let me give you three seconds to respond. Okay, cool. Jeff, I got you. Uh, Jen, may I ask your last name? Oh, really quick, Jen, did I? Jen? It's Jen Baker. Who is it? Jen Baker. Awesome. Thank you. I'll make sure that uh, I get that taken care of. Okay, Andy, I got Cheryl, I got you. Uh, let's see, Jeannie, I'm uh, guessing that this is Jeannie from Business of Breakfast, right? Jeannie Sturgeon. Yep, I'm pretty sure that is. That makes sense. Um, and I think for the most part, I've got all of the phone numbers. I have an MMSD user. Uh, oh, you weren't muted. That's, that's me, Aaron Underwood. Aaron Underwood, awesome. Thank you, Aaron, for being on today. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna read the list really quick here. If you don't hear your name, you can send me a chat message uh, or you can just uh, unmute yourself and let me know here. But I got Cheryl Wilhelm, John, I think that's Brooks up there, Vicki, Susan Clark, Lauren Tam, Andy Agree, Jeff Kramers, uh, Jen Baker, Jeannie Sturgeon, Don Baldwin, Kyle, Lisa, Terry, um, Brent, Chris, and Aaron. Did I miss anybody? The Brooks that was on there was Brooks Bernhagen. Oh, okay. Thank you, Aaron. That wouldn't be on my radar because uh, not from Omar here. So, okay, awesome. So Brooks is actually the first name. Very valid. All right. Okay. I think that takes care of everything then. Thank you guys very much for your time today. I will send that follow-up email today with the Dropbox link in it. Uh, so that you're going to be able to go in, look that over. If you have any questions, you let me know. Chris, you unmuted yourself. You got something to say? Uh, thanks a lot, Brandon. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, everybody, have a great weekend. Uh, if you're in Omaha, it's a little cloudy. I don't know what it's looking like out uh, northwest for you guys. I heard snow, I think. Uh, might not be the best. But everybody, have a great weekend. And uh, looking forward to seeing you at your visitor day, or if I don't see you, you guys have a very successful one. Thank you.